Today I want to do a video about my um, ELR rifle cleaning technique um, and what works for me. Um, I do it uh, and essentially it's a fairly minimal cleaning technique that I use and I do it pretty much in the same fashion and it's, and it's very much in relevance to how I do my um, barrel breaking. Um, what I do in a barrel breaking is quite simple. I start, I make sure I've got a clean barrel, I fire a shot, I then run a wet a wet patch, a um, couple of dry patches and see how much carbon I've got in the barrel. Um, I'm also checking for, uh, for metal, copper and that sort of stuff but really I don't see that sort of stuff as a rule with a modern barrel. Um, I'm simply running like I said a wet patch, a um, couple of dry patches and see how much carbon comes out. I'll do another shot um, and generally um, I'll find that it's normally three to five shots um, and I'll find that, that I'm not getting that much carbon when I, do the, when I do the clean. As soon as I've got to that place, which can be at the first shot and could be at the tenth shot, like I said, generally it's three to five shots, I will find that it's started to um, settle down a tiny bit, I'll move into five shots in a row and then do the same thing. A wet patch um, and two or three dry patches, see how much carbon's there. Um, and I'm looking for the same thing, when, whether it's one lot of five shots or it's five lots of five shots um, to get to where I'm not getting as much carbon, not getting as much dirt out of it, the barrel is starting to settle in a little bit, um, is when I'll then move on to do whether it's 10 shots or 20 shots. What I'm trying to say with that is it's, it's a progression, which really means some barrels are already very nice and um, polished inside, they're already working very well. Um, and I'm not getting a lot out of them. So I can really have one or two shots, maybe three shots at one shot at a time. Then I'll do, um, on, a, on a barrel that's happening very quickly, I'll tend to go to three shots and do a clean, and then I'll go and do five shots and do a clean, and then I'll do 10 shots and do a clean. And I'll tend to, like I said, that changes for what the barrel's like. Um, what I'm trying to do when I'm breaking in a barrel um, is very little with the modern barrel in the way of smoothing out the rough edges and things like that. There is a little tiny bit of that probably happening, but more of what I'm doing is actually laying it in a little bit of copper, where it's actually laying into the grooves of the actual rifling, um, and basically doing a, a little bit of settling the carbon in the same sort of places. So it's basically getting a barrel in a running form. Um, that is really where I am trying to, what I'm trying to carry on with my cleaning. Now in the early days, over here you'll see with the copper solvents and the, and the carbon and, and metal solvents that we used to run, the Hobbs cleaners and different ones I used to run, um, I used to run that sort of thing. I'd run out with, with wire brushes and go through and with the brass brushes or nylon brushes and run through the barrels and clean them and do that reasonably regularly. Um, I really found out of that that um, there would be after a good clean it took a few shots to get the to get the gun back on to where it was being consistent and working properly so several years ago um, I really stopped I haven't ran a brass or a nylon brush or a solvent in a long range rifle for the last five or six years I have not put that through one rifle I um, mean these are rifles that I don't do huge huge amount of shots but these are rifles that have still done a thousand to 2,000 rounds um, and I've not run any form of solvent through there. I've not tried to clean um, copper out of the barrels at all. What I'm doing instead, and I actually, different oils I've used, but I now really pretty much use Ballistol and Ballistol only. Um, there are lots of other good choices. I've only got the gun oil here at the moment, but there are lots of other good choices. I've, I'm really I use my Ballistol with handguns, I use it with my old lever actions and that sort of stuff. I find it does the job well, I like it, um, and I tend to find with a nice little bit of a soak and what I'll do to, to clean a rifle and pretty much whether I've shot one round or I've shot a hundred rounds, pretty much have the same cleaning process. And then in that case, we'll use a wet mop I have the right size mop for the barrel. I'll put, I will basically spray that and soak that with um, Ballistol. I'll then put that through the barrel and I'll just basically go up and down a couple of times in there, both backwards and forwards inside the barrel to make sure the barrel's actually wet with the Ballistol. I'll then remove the mop, um, let it soak for two or three minutes 
um, and then I'll actually tend to go through with I'll actually wipe down the um, so I just with a rag I'll just take a rag um, and then and wipe the excess and any carbon off the actual mop I'll put the mop back through there and then I'll push the mop through to where I've actually taken it through um, and I tend to have a practice of where I will put the mop through I'll screw the end off it so I'm not pulling it back again at that stage I'll pull the rod back out um, and then I will at that stage start where I start pushing some patches through um, and I'll push patches through until my patch is clean so and and I'm not getting to where I'm trying to get absolutely clean but I'll make sure that the, essentially there's no carbon and there's only really a slight gray mark of where the actual patch has gone through and like I said whether it's one shot or it's 100 shots it's the same process um, the last thing I'll tend to do is I'll then take one mop sorry one patch uh, put a tiny bit of oil on it run it through and then put one dry one afterwards I'm trying to leave a tiny film of the ballistol there um, most of them are stainless barrels um, not really an issue in that side of things it's just a nature of where I come from I like to have a tiny bit of oil on top of bores no, on top of I should say any metal I prefer it to be a little bit um, damp with oil rather than completely dry that's how they go in the safe for me and that's how uh, by and large if I do my job right I really find I can cold bore out of a rifle like that and I'm also comfortable leaving that rifle in my safe for 12 months like that so that's my regime you'd say um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that the copper um, and any really root based carbon that's part of the actual um, running barrel is staying in that form I'm trying to keep one shot to the next shot the same as the last shot of last month to the first shot of next month all in the same place um, and there's there's a copper equilibrium that people speak of, speak about which essentially is a point where you are your bullet as it goes through your rifling is putting some copper down and it's pull, pulling some copper, copper out and I'm trying to keep it at a point where it's always putting down as much as it's pulling out. You're staying in the same place. For me, I found I really have not got any of my rifles that are running to where they're over coppering. Um, and all of them seem to like that from the little 223 up to um, the 375. They all are behaving, you know, the 338s, the 300 wind mags, all that are doing pretty well. I don't gun, run guns very hard. I'm not doing 3,000 or 5,000 rounds a um, year with any one of the rifles, but for the way I'm doing it and the way I'm running, that's working for me. Now, I should go, that's the basic regime. I should go through some of the equipment to use to do that and some of the other details. Um, most people should know by now that they're using a, a, the likes of a bore guide is about protecting. I'll put this in here so you can see what you're talking about. Um, I'll just put this down. I'll explain this a little bit later. It's the part to do with your rifle. We'll pull that stuff down. Pull that bolt out. Put our ball guide in. And then we'll run the appropriate. So essentially, we've got the ability to essentially then go through and run our mop up and back through our, through our barrel and essentially what your ball guide is about is stopping from at your throat at the beginning of your barrel that you are not putting hard metal against things I mean it's a good practice to run a ball guide um, and whether it's a universal unit or it's a caliber specific one like this um, the universal ones tend to have a, a chamfer on the front there um, you have a, a lockdown point that you can actually set up in your, in your actual bolt to actually hold it in there and then you've got the same thing going on. Um, this unit here has essentially an ice o-ring um, that's set to the, the size of the chamber, an o-ring to make it grip, uh, a piece at the back here to be able to make it sit out and hold where the bolt is, holds it nice and straight and keeps the, the, the guide or actual your um, push through, keeps it nice and straight. And what I'd like to qualify with that is a couple of things. That's the nicest way to do it, um, but there are some details I would go through in a way of what's relevant for that. 
Here I have probably the worst style of um, push through that you can actually get for a rifle. If you look in close, you'll see that essentially it's one of the multiple units that comes out of a kit. It's got threads on it and it pulls apart. And then you can see here these little marks, these little rub marks where the steel, because of those little edges, there's always a little filing process going on between them. So this is probably, although it's usable and in a ball guide situation it's workable, it's probably the worst of this sort of, this sort of thing you can get because of these little hard marks. Now keep in mind, one of the things that I would go with that is that barrel wear, as much as yes that's a negative and potentially there's some issues, down here you'll tend to find doesn't cause much of an issue. It's the right thing to do, you're looking after your barrel, it's the bit that makes it go straight. The, the truth of it is, is the barrel is hard metal, this is soft metal. There's very little wear comes from this. Um, I would always try and go with the likes of this, which is actually a composite rod so essentially it's a lot softer you know the likes of a lot of the steel ones we have are actually lightly coated so they're powder coated rods to go in there this is where you can actually go through and then there's no steel against steel even though it's a soft steel it's a hard steel there's no steel against steel it's just nicer on that sort of score the things that are actually more relevant for your rifle and the things that people can very much do wrong cleaning wise essentially is up at the other end of the barrel in under here is what's called your crown now for the people who don't know what your crown is, essentially your crown is simply you have your barrel which has the flat end on it, the hole in the middle there, well, just around the hole, just around the actual barrel hole is the piece that's called the crown. Now in some gunsmiths, some rifle makers will put a nice little chamfer on there that makes that quite strong. It's still the most important part of your barrel because as that bullet leaves it needs it to be completely uniform as it leaves. If there's a little chunk out of the place where it's a little bit crooked and uneven at that point, then what will actually happen is the gas is going to release at a different place and your bullet is not going to be as stable. You want that crown to be in perfect condition for an accurate rifle. So one of the biggest mistakes that people generally make, and that's with any one of these rods, is essentially when they put the push through right through and actually let the mop or the jag or whatever it is come out right at the end, and then pull it back. That is when, unless you have exactly the right equipment, if there's the tiniest bit of an edge anywhere, where the threads go in, where the brass goes on the end of it, that tiniest bit of an edge, and if you have a crown that has sharp, a, a lot of rifle makers, a lot of gunsmiths will leave that very sharp, trying to keep it at a very sharp edge, in theory, to make it more accurate, because it is such a sharp, clean edge at the end there. But that also means even though that is super hard steel, it's super brittle steel. So the moment you push your push through right through and then pull it out and you can see people do it and you'll, you'll see there's a, little, there's a little tiny feel of that coming back through. And I'm sure in most people's heads, well, it's a, it's a good push rod, good, good rod. It's, it's nice and brass. Brass is softer in, than, than steel. All those bits and pieces. The truth of it is that isn't actually how it, what will happen. That brass, that little edge that's on the back there, if that touches a sharp edge up the front here, what you can definitely get is, because it is so sharp and so brittle, it'll actually take a little tiny chip out of it. When you speak to most gunsmiths, they'll tell you that's one of the biggest reasons that a barrel goes crook. Not because it's worn out on the inside, not because it's, you know, there's rifles that'll actually have one third of the rifling gone and they'll still shoot straight. It's when the crown turns to mud is when you really start to lose some, lose some accuracy. That's one of the mistakes that can happen there. And a, a thing to keep in mind, um, it tends to be somewhere to be careful about. You don't have to get too weird about all that process. You just make sure that you either don't push the push through all the way through when you're mopping it, or when you do, you bring it back very carefully. So as it comes back across, that works very carefully. Another thing while I'm on the things that gunsmiths will tell you and what is very much a problem with how some people clean their guns is a dry bolt. It is one of the worst things for a gun. Now I don't like a dry bolt. I like all the sides. I always leave them a little bit looped. I use the likes of a little bit of, um, I use the, the Tetra gun grease, but really I can also use any form of lubricant, but I like the actual bolt face to be a little bit wet. 
obviously in dusty conditions and things that might cause you some issues if you've got grit coming up inside there I keep my guns clean I try and keep the dirt off them I like this action to be nice and smooth and clean the place that you have really got to be careful with and make sure it's not dry is actually your bolt face so if I get a little pointer essentially on your lugs on your locking lugs your bolt lugs at the front here these faces here around either side those faces there essentially are the faces that are up against where that actually lock in so they actually go up there we'll put we'll put him back in so they go and actually are locking in behind there and coming down they're pushing on little slides at the top they're pushing in their little in their grooves for where the lugs lock into now those if they're dry what's actually happening is that metal against metal they're both hard metal and metal against metal with no lubrication is wet and especially if you run some higher load, you've got a bit of grit in the place, or you've got some high load um, where your where your where your um where your loads are locking things up a little bit, so you're getting a bit more case expansion. You have to pull it out. If it's dry, then you're wearing on the back side of that. And what will happen very quickly is you open up your headspace. So it's another thing of a very common damage point to your actual to your uh, action in this case because of essentially running that dry. A little bit of lube, every time when I go through and clean it, I will go through and make sure that I've put a little squirt of lube down the side, I'll work that in with my fingers, I'll make sure it's on the back of the bolt lobes as a very important thing. Um, they're obviously without lube on the bolt, um, I, it's obviously something that, that you should be putting some lube on your bolt. Um, they'll tend to naturally um, run a little bit of lube in there if you're not cleaning. They'll tend to be a little bit of lubrication, but they can dry out obviously in different conditions. So running a bit of lube on the bolt. To me, the very natural thing. Unless that bolt slides backwards and forwards very gently and very easily, very nicely, then I'm always trying to lube them. I can't stand the feel of metal rubbing on metal. I really uh, am a mechanic and the way our world works is metal runs on oil. Um, and that's how it's supposed to run. So that's really how I like to have it. Um, but in the nature of it, all the rest of it, really it's a very minimal thing. I'm trying to, as I said, leave that rifle um, for... My, my clean is really to do not much more than to clean the tiny bit of carbon that's left there on a barrel that's running nicely um, and to leave a tiny bit of oil there. And it's also exactly the same as what I do when I'm breaking in a barrel. It's to tell me my, what my what my rifle's doing. So if I do a clean one day and all of a sudden I'm finding a lot more dirt and carbon there, not something I really run into, but it's something I'm looking at. Um, there's obviously in a way of in a way of very, very thoroughly looking after your rifle, getting them inspected, seeing what your bore is can be a relevant thing. The truth of it, it's not the type of thing I do. I'll go through if I get a rifle that is no longer holding its group um, and I've done all I can do and the rifle's shooting like it should do then okay then it's time to do an inspection um, at the state the rate I'm shooting now I'm just not doing the rounds to get to that sort of place but like I said this minimal form of cleaning um, which I'm trying to keep that copper um, fragrance of carbon in the same place as it is when it's shooting all the time is working for me and it's working well